Now we've seen the meaning of lipids and we've seen the functions of lipids. Now let's look at the classification of lipids. How can we classify these lipids? Now lipids can be classified into four groups. The first one here is what? Simple lipids. The second one is what? Compound lipid. Third one is derived lipids. And the fourth one is what? Complex lipid. Now the very first one, simple lipid. Simple lipid is composed of just two things. Simple lipids are composed of two things. What and what? Fatty acid and what? No, alcohol. Simple lipids are composed of two things. Fatty acid and what? Alcohol. Now, sometimes the alcohol present is usually what? Glycerol. But other times, the alcohol can be other things. So, majorly, simple lipids are composed of what and what? Fatty acid and what? And glycerol. We are going to see how we have to draw them now. But let me explain first. So, simple lipids, we just have fatty acid and what? And alcohol present. Now, if the alcohol, sorry, the, the simple lipids, we said the two types we have are what? Fat and oil. And what? What is this, right? Fat and oil, they are our triacylglycerol. If you don't call it triacylglycerol, you call it what? Triglyceride. Triglyceride. Then waxes. The difference between fats and oil is that in room temperature, fat is what? Solid, right? Why oil is what? Liquid. So we are just looking at the difference between fat and oil is just in their physical state at room temperature. Now, what is this? The difference between fats and oil and what is this? Is, remember that they are both simple lipids, right? It means they contain two things. What and what? Fatty acid and alcohol. Now, in fatty acid, in wax, the fatty acid found in wax is a long chain fatty acid. It's a long chain fatty acid. And the alcohol present is not glycerol. Other alcohols can be found in waxes. But glycerol cannot be found. Do you get that? So this one contains long chain what? Fatty acids, right? Good. But they are all simple lipids. So it means simple lipids, all simple lipids are composed of what and what? Fatty acid and what? Alcohol. Good. Now, compound lipid. Compound lipid. In addition to fatty acid and alcohol present in simple lipid, we are adding something. Do you get that? Compound lipid is composed of simple lipid plus an additional compound. So if compound lipid contains simple lipid plus an additional compound, it means how many things do we have in a compound lipid? Three, right? Because, okay, compound lipid contains what now? Number one, fatty acid. Number two, alcohol. Number three, other compounds, right? Good. And additional compound. So anytime you add something else to fatty acid and alcohol, what you're not having is a what? A compound lipid, right? Good. So that's the difference between a simple lipid and a compound lipid. Simple lipid contains only fatty acid and what? Alcohol. Compound lipid contains fatty acid, alcohol, and an additional compound, right? Good. Now the additional compound we are adding to the, to the fatty acid and alcohol can be phosphate group can be nitrogenous basis, can be sulfur, can be anything. So if the additional group we are adding is phosphate group, you call it what? Phospho what? Let me see we're thinking first. Give me the composition of phospholipid. Phospholipid contains number one, phosphate group, fatty acid and what? And alcohol, right? Good. So you see that it is no longer a simple lipid. Why? We are adding an additional group, right? Good. That is why it's a compound lipid. Now, depending on the alcohol present, phospholipids can be divided into two. Number one is what? Glycerophospholipid. Yeah, glycerophospholipid contains three things also, right? Fatty acid, what again? 
Glycerol. Thank you. Now the alcohol present here is what? Glycerol and what? Phosphate group. So glycerophospholipid. The alcohol is glycerol. We have phosphate group. Then our fatty acid. Then if the alcohol present is sphingosine, the alcohol present is sphingosine, we call it what? Sphingophospholipid. So sphingophospholipid con contains how many things? Three things, right? Fatty acid, sphingosine, and what? And phosphate group. And phosphate group. Good. Now examples of, listen attentively now, examples of glycerophospholipid are phosphatidy syringe. Phosphatidy choline, phosphatidy ethanolamine. We have other ones. We have other ones. So many others. But now look at this. Because we'll still come back to all of them. Now, phosphatidy serine. What are the components of phosphatidy serine? Mention them. Number one. Phosphate group. Number two. Fatty acid. Alcohol. Which alcohol? Glycerol, right? And what? And serine. Serine is attached to the faucet. We are going to see this. So if you are asked to give examples of phospholipids, phosphatidy something, right? Phosphatidy choline, phosphatidy serine, phosphatidy, just know that phosphatidy is there. Then you add something. Good. But we are going to take them one after the other. So before the end of this class, you have it in your head. So don't bother yourself. Now, swingo phospholipids. Example is what? Single myelin. If you forget anything I've said today, don't forget anything. Because you didn't come here to play. Alright, so simple lipids contains only two things, right? Fatty acid and alcohol. Good. Compound lipids contains fatty acid, alcohol, and what? An additional group. We said if the alcohol found is glycerol, you call it glycerophospholipid. If the alcohol found is single sin, you call it single phospholipid. Good. Now, derived lipid is the third class of lipid here. When they say you derive something, it means what? What does it mean to derive? Gotten from something, right? Good. Now you have simple lipid and you have compound lipid. If I break down simple lipid, what do I have? Yes. Fatty acid and alcohol, right? It means this fatty acid here is a derived lipid, right? Because I'm getting it from simple lipid. Do we understand? If I break down compound lipid, that thing I get from breaking down compound lipid is a derived lipid. But is it that as I break down compound lipid or simple lipid, anything I get from it is a lipid, it's a derived lipid. That substance must have the properties of lipid. For example, glycerol. Remember, in simple lipid, the alcohol can be glycerol, right? So I can have fatty acid and glycerol. Fatty acid is a derived lipid. It still has the properties of lipid. Remember when we defined lipid? We said lipids are substances that are insoluble in what? Uh, but soluble in what? So if what you are getting after hydrolysis of simple or compound lipid is soluble in water, is that in derived lipid? No. Because lipids are insoluble in water. So now, fatty acid, insoluble in water, derived lipid. Glycerol, which is the alcohol now, is still insoluble in water. Then cholesterol, cholesterol is another derived lipid. We have other steroids, steroid hormones too. So these are derived lipids. So derived lipids are gotten from the hydrolysis, the breakdown of simple and what? Compound lipids. Do you understand that? Good. Now the next thing is complex lipid. In complex lipid, you are adding lipid as a whole to another compound other than lipid. Lipid and another compound. Please take note of because it's different from compound, li compound lipid. Example of complex lipid. Let me use that to explain. Lipoprotein. How many macromolecules do we have? Four macromolecules, right? Number one, carbohydrate. Number two, protein. Number three, Nucleic acid, number four. Huh? Huh? Say if, if you are sure, say it, from, say it out. Be bold. Lipids, right? Good. Now, lipoprotein. What do you notice? Lipid is here, right? Protein is here, right? 
So you are complexing, you are joining two macromolecules together. That is why it's called a complex lipid. Now the lipid is in addition, you are adding it to something. In compound lipid, phospholipid, you just added another. Is this a macromolecule? It's not right. But the phospholipid here, yeah, the phospholipid, you know, we are just, this is just an additional group, right? But yeah, protein is part of the main molecule. So you are just adding two main things together. Same thing as sulfolipids. Glycolipids. Glycolipids, what and what are we adding together? Carbohydrate and what? And lipids, right? You are joining carbohydrate and lipids together. Now, how to note complex lipids and compound lipids? Compound lipids, we said you have fatty acid, alcohol, and what? An additional compound, right? Which the additional compound can be phosphate group, right? Good. In complex lipid, you are joining two big molecules together to form a totally new one. So two of them are complex together. Two of them are complex together. All right, so basically, this is how we can classify our lipids. We are going to look at them one after the other. And please, no cramming. Cramming is bad. Understand it. Now we say simple lipids have what and what? Fatty acid and... If I add an additional compound, it becomes... And if the alcohol is glycerol, it's what? Glycerol. If in phospholipid, glycerol what? If the alcohol present is single, sin is what? Single. If I break down simple or compound lipids, what do I have? Derived. Derived lipid. If I add lipid with another compound, complex lipid with another compound, what do I have? Complex. Complex lipids. All right, so let's continue. Any questions so far? All right, let's look at classification of lipids. Classification of lipids based on saponification. Now, before we classify lipids based on saponification, we have to know what saponification is talking about. So, what is saponification? Alkaline hydrolysis of what? Fat and oil, right? To give what? To give soap. So, basically, here we are producing soap in saponification. You are producing soap. And in saponification... There are two things that must be there. What and what? Fatty acids plus an alkali, right? That is a base. A base like sodium hydroxide or what? Potassium hydroxide. So here we'll be having fatty acid and an alkali to give us our soap. To give us soap and water. Now, this saponification process, fatty acid, plus an alkali. That's why we say alkali hydrolysis. Now, in this case, is it all lipids? Let me, let me use the general term here, lipids. Is it all lipids that can be used in the production of soap? Eh? Is it all lipids that can be used in the production of soap? How many of you have seen or you know how to produce soap here? Okay, that's at the back. All right, so saponification, we have lipids and we have alkali. But now it is not all lipids that can be used in this saponification process. Now, those lipids that can be used in the saponification process are called what? Saponifiable lipids. So saponifiable lipids are lipids that can undergo al alkali hydrolysis, right, to form soap. Why those lipids that cannot be hydrolyzed? So form soap are called what? Non-saponifiable lipids. Now examples of saponifiable lipids are triacylglycerol. If I don't call it triacylglycerol, I call it what? Triglyceride, right? I we, we will see why this name is like this as we go on. Triglyceride. These are fat and oil. This is where our fat and oil falls. Now glycolipid. Glycolipid. Is it a simple lipid, compound lipid, complex lipid, or derived lipid? Complex lipid, right? Glycolipids. Now, single lipid, phospholipids, and some waxes. These are saponifiable lipids. But non-saponifiable lipids, example, steroids, tapins. We see, we see tapins. 
prostaglandins we still see all these things but for now know that these sets are saponifiable these sets are what non-saponifiable so basically what you have to know from here is that saponifiable lipids are those lipids that can undergo alkali hydrolysis right to form what soap and we said one thing about this saponifiable lipid is that first sorry the examples are this why the examples of non-saponifiable lipids are these any question before we move on